what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now, from the beginning. everybody. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here, and I'm excited to share God's word with you this morning. Are you ready to hear the word of the Lord? Yes. All right. Are you ready to be challenged? Yes. Okay. I did, that was weak. Are you ready to be challenged? Yes. Okay. Are you ready to receive some encouragement, some hope, and some greater understanding and revelation of God's word? We're going to get into it uh, in just a second, but we're going to talk about the names of God. So would you say that with me this morning? The names of of God. All right, one more time, like you mean it. We got to wake up this morning. The names of God. Uh, during a, uh, I heard a story that it was, it was said that during a job interview, a woman was asked to give her name. And she replied, Hey, my name is Lily. Well, and the boss said, well, That's a wonderful name. And, and how did you get that name of a, of a flower? And she told him, well, my parents gave me that name because when I was born, this beautiful lily just fell from the sky and landed on me. Later on, the, a couple days later, the, the boss interviewed a, a man for the same job. And he wasn't too much to look at. And he had kind of a rough appearance to him. And the boss asked him, well, what is your name? And he, he gave with a, a crooked smile on his face. He said, my name is Piano. <laughs> now that went just like woo over some of your heads but I'll give you a minute to think about that and probably later on in the message you'll be like ha 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 that was so funny Pastor Brian okay but listen uh, names are important names are important in the Bible God reveals himself with many many different names one commentator that I read this week counted over 63 different names of God in the scripture. And th that seems like a lot, but our God is awesome. And his, the number of names we could use to describe him are endless, as, as he is endless. And so to begin, I just want us to look at a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray in Matthew chapter 6. So if you have your uh, worship guide, get, get out your uh, sermon notes. It will also be up on the screen. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to read what is commonly understood as the Lord's Prayer. It says this starting in verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Would you say that part with me? Hallowed be your name. Underline those words right there. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What I want to draw our attention to as we get started in this first introductory message about the names of God is this phrase, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means to, to hallow something means to set it apart as holy, to, uh, to have great respect or honor or reverence. For a name. God's name, in other words, is to be understood as holy, as set apart and special and worthy of tremendous honor and respect and reverence. In addition, when we think about hallowed 
be your name. It, these are not just words that we just need to repeat or recite in a common prayer. But it should be a truth that we hold dear and close to our hearts and, and that we live by. So I want us to think about these, these, uh, this phrase right here, hallowed be your name. I want us to think about the different names of God and how special and wonderful and powerful they are. When I was in uh, Israel one time, I've, I've had the chance to go to Israel a couple times uh, in the past, but there was a, a, a Jewish believer that was there and he gave me a, a beautiful gift and it's a, a prayer shawl. <clears throat> and on this prayer shawl, on the, to- on the top of it, it's sewn in and it says, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And on the, on the sides, there are the names of God, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, and so on. And this is one of the most beautiful gifts I've ever received. And sometimes when I'm in my prayer closet, I put this, I just put this over me. And just to remind myself how amazing God is, how multifaceted, how beautiful his attributes, how beautiful his character is in my life. And it reminds me of the truth of who he is. So as we get started here, I want to share with you just a few uh, foundational thoughts about the names of God in Scripture. The first one is this. These names that are given by God, these are, these are revealed by God, not made up by people. Does that make sense? These are the names of God revealed by himself in the, in the Scripture, not just something that someone has made up. Because God is not some... Uh, informal, abstract, or nameless power. No, he is personal. He is personable and, and knowable. And one of the, one of the ways is his, that his personality is revealed is through his names. Number two, I would tell you this, that each name of God reveals one of his qualities or characteristics. Each name of God reveals some truth about him. And we're, we're going to focus on each name as we go on through this teaching series one at a time. But it's kind of like studying a multifaceted diamond. And when we're done looking at his different names, we will appreciate his beauty. We will appreciate his power. We'll appreciate his, his love and his grace and his mercy like never before. So I want to invite you in. To this study, I want to invite you in to think about the different names of God and how it can bless your life. It can enhance your relationship with him by understanding these names. And thirdly, I would tell you this as we begin. These names were given to people, to God's people, in order to help them in a moment of need. In a moment of need. And it's my prayer that as we go through this series, as we go through this time together, that it not just be academic. That it not just be head knowledge, but it becomes personal and deeply heart changing so that we can call out to God in our time of crisis and in our time of need. Thank you. And these these names are kind of like a miniature A miniature portrait filled with different promises given by God as a gift to us so that we can actually know him. Now, I was reading this this week and I really had a special encounter time with God. And just he he he, it's almost like he tenderized my heart as the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about the truth of who God is. And I read one commentator, and, and his, his name is Walter Brueggemann. How'd you like a name like that? Uh, but he says, he prays this in one of his commentaries, one of his books. He says, You are not the God we would have chosen. You are not the God we would have chosen. And I just began to ponder that and think about that. And what does he mean by that? And I read one guy responding to that. And he said this. I want to share it with you. It's up on the screen. This comes from Michael Card. He writes, That troubling prayer 
resonates in my heart. For the truth is, most often, I would have chosen and indeed do choose a God other than Him. Most often, I would rather not learn the hard lessons the hard way. I would rather not have to worship in the wilderness where God continuously calls me to find and to be found by him. Listen to this. I would rather God simply meet my expectations and fix my problems, heal my hurts, and be on his way. I want a God who is faithful to me in ways that I understand, in ways that I expect, who expresses faithfulness in ways that I choose. And I thought to myself, how many times have I believed in a God that I have made up in my own mind? And I want him to meet my needs, and I want him to fit into my box, and I want him to be compatible with my understanding and my expectations. He is not the God so often that I would have chosen for myself. And so during this series, as challenging as that can be to think about, I want us to invite, I want to invite us all to consider The truth about who God actually is. Not the God that we want to be, that we want him to be. Not the God that we've made up in our minds, but who he actually is as he's he's revealed in the scriptures. Amen? Are you ready to be challenged? Okay. So I've chosen 11, 11 names of God to study over the next few weeks, and my hope is that as we discover who he actually is, that we will love him more deeply. How many of you know the more you know God, the more you will love him? The more you have a personal, intimate relationship with him, the more you will love him with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your strength and all of your mind, as the great commandment tells us. So I want us to fall in love with God in a fresh way. During this series, I want to give you a sneak preview, okay? If you want a sneak preview, jot these names down. We're going to talk about God the Creator, Elohim. We're going to think about Elohim. He is the infinite, all powerful God who is the Creator God who shows His works that He is the Creator, the Sustainer, and the Supreme Judge of the entire world. He is Elohim. Also, he is God the Lord, Adonai. He is God the Lord. Adonai means Lord or Master. If God is Adonai to us, then he is the one who we submit to, who we bow down to. He is the Master of our lives. Adonai is the ultimate authority figure of our life and the one to whom our, we, we give complete allegiance and devotion to. Also, there's the, the God of peace, who is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. How can we find peace in this world that's filled with chaos and is filled with strife and anxiety? How can we find peace? It's by knowing Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Also, we're going to talk about God, our provider, Jehovah Jireh. How many of you know that God faithfully provides what we need in this life and exactly when we need it? And as we live in a love-based obedience to him, he he promises to provide abundantly above all that we can ask or think or imagine. Also, the God of the covenant, covenant keeper, his name is Yahweh. Yahweh is that personal and intimate name that God gave to Israel when he made a covenant to be their God as he delivered them from Egypt. The name Yahweh means that God is eternal. God is unchangeable. God always keeps his promises. He is Yahweh. 
at the God Almighty, otherwise known as El Shaddai. This name literally means the all-sufficient one. It is, it is translated in many English Bibles as God Almighty or the Almighty or Almighty God. He is the one who mightily nourishes, satisfies, protects, and supplies his people. He is God Almighty, El Shaddai. Also, the God who is there, Jehovah Shammah. So often, you and I, we live our lives and we look ahead to some event or some time in our lives, some potential disaster or some looming date in the future. And, and sometimes we wonder what this date or what this event is going to bring into our lives. I mean, it could be a doctor's appointment. It could be a court date. It could be a, your child leaving home or your mate, your spouse passing away. It could be a new job. It could be a divorce. It could be uh, moving from a place that you've called home for many years. But, but whatever this future event may be, it causes this knot in the pit of our stomach sometimes when we think about it. Be it real or be it imagined, this future event causes sometimes huge amounts of stress. And anxiety and worry in our lives, but it's in those times that we need to remember Jehovah Shema, which means the Lord is there. The Lord is there. He already is in your tomorrow. And He is not only there, but He has complete authority and power over what your tomorrow is going to look like. He is Jehovah Shema. Next is God the healer, Jehovah Rapha. How many of you know that our God can heal anything that has wounded us, that has hurt us in some way? He is the God who heals. Physical pain, God can heal that. Emotional pain, God can heal that. Relational pain, God can heal that. Mental pain, God, Jehovah Rapha, can heal that that. Also, we're going to talk about the God of power, Jehovah, Jehovah Sabaoth. I think that's how you say that. This name refers to a captain or a mighty general who commands a mighty army. Our God is the king, and he is the commander over over. Uh, every army, a spiritual army, earthly army, he mobilizes them. Why? To accomplish his purposes. He has unlimited power, unbridled might, untarnished glory. He is impossible to describe, and his, his power is so hard to imagine. But he is the commander. He is the authority over the armies. Of this, of, the, uh, of this world. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of hosts. One preacher, Charles Spurgeon, said this. The Lord of hosts is on our side. And woe to those who fight against him. For they shall flee like smoke before the wind. When he gives the word to scatter them. This is how powerful our God is. He is the commander. He is the captain. He is the Lord of of hosts. Next is God is my banner, Jehovah Nisi. In opposing, in, in a battle of opposing nations, they would they would fly their flags, fly their own flags at a pole, uh, at each of their respective battle fronts, and this was given to this was this was to give their soldiers a a sense of of hope, to give their soldiers a sense of purpose and and focus for the battle. This is what our God is to us. He is a banner of encouragement and hope for us and a focal point that we can look to in the midst of our battles that we face every day. He is God, our banner, Jehovah Nisi. And lastly, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. No greater name, no other name. No, no, he has the name which is above every other name. His name means Yahweh saves, Yahweh rescues. 
He is Jesus, our risen Lord, our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He's our soon coming King. He is the eternal Son of God that always existed. Jesus is the eternal Word made flesh. And His name is above every other name. I was thinking about that song. There's just something about His name. The name of Jesus. Master. Savior. Jesus. Like a fragrance after the rain. You guys know that old song? Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name, the name of Jesus. And we're going to talk about the name of Jesus and how he is revealed in really all of these other names in our lives. But today I want us to think about this phrase, the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord, because sometimes in our thinking, we can we can have messed up thinking when it comes to who God really is. So I want us to think about the name of the Lord. I want to give you six key statements. Jot these down if you're taking notes. His name, first of all, is good. His name is good. For what look at Psalm 52, verse nine, for what you have done. I will always praise your name in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. Say it with me. His name is good. Number two, I want you to see this. His name is mighty in power. His name is mighty in power. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6. He affirms that and he says, there is no one like you, Lord. Lord, you are great, and your name is what? Mighty in power. His name is also majestic. His name is majestic. In Psalm 8, verse 1, it says, Lord, our Lord, how what? majestic is your name in all the earth. Not only that, but his name is glorious. His name is glorious. In Psalm 115, it says, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Because of why? Because of your love and because of your faithfulness. His name is glorious. His name is holy. It is set apart. It is unlike any other name. It is altogether pure. And powerful. In Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15, he says this For this is what the high and exalted one says He who lives forever, whose name is holy. He says this I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of of the contrite. So not only does he live in a place where he is in a place that is high and holy, but he's also very, very present with those who have hearts that are contrite, that are humble, and that are lowly. God is also there, and that brings me to this one. His name is near. His name is near. In Psalm 75, verse 1, the psalmist said, we praise you, God. We praise you for why your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. So I want us to think about how amazing the names of God are. And how the truth of God can set us free when we, not, when we don't think about God in a way that that we can humanly imagine, but when we think about God for how he is revealed in his holy word. And so we think about how he's good. We think about how he's mighty in power, how he's majestic, and how he's glorious. He's holy, and he is near. I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit 
this week as I was just considering and studying and praying and meditating upon his word, just in my office here, um, I felt like the Lord was right there standing beside me. And his hand was upon my shoulder. And as I looked to his word, I felt like he was just opening my eyes afresh to see him for who he really is. And not for who I want him to be. So I want to share that with you because I pray. And my deepest prayer this week has been, God, what I'm experiencing right now in your presence I pray that every single person who's here, who's listening to this on YouTube, would begin to sense your holy presence like I'm sensing it now. That we would know who our God is. That we would know how holy he is. That we would know how much he loves us. And wants to know us and have a relationship with us. Is it okay just to share my heart with you? And so as I was receiving that and experiencing just an encounter with him, I thought, how do I respond? What am I to do in the midst of this glory? How would, how would it please the Lord that I take action after experiencing this. And I just jotted that, this down, and these are the next points that I felt like the Lord showed me in His Scripture. This is what you need to do, Brian. You need to praise His my name. I will praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 113 says this, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And I thought to myself, that's, that's how I, that's a perfect response. What can you, what other response is there when you're in the presence of the Lord and he's revealing who he is to you? How can you respond with anything other than praise? <laughs> Next is I will proclaim his name. What an honor it is to stand before you week after week and proclaim his name. Proclaim the word of God. And I thought to myself, what, a, what an honor. What a privilege that we can all proclaim his name in our families, in our workplaces, in our marriages, in our relationships. We can praise him, yes, but we can proclaim. We can actually lift up and preach his name to our community in a loving and gentle and holy way. We can preach his name and let others know how amazing and awesome that our God really is. So we can proclaim his name. Deuteronomy 32 verse 3 says, I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. So we can praise him and we can proclaim his name. And thirdly, I would tell you this, we can just call on his name. We can call upon his name. This is what prayer is. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit is calling his church to a deeper prayer life? <clears throat> when we understand his names, it leads us to a deeper life of prayer. And he calls us to call upon him. He empowers us. He woos us to call upon his name in prayer. Psalm 116 verse 4 says this, then I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, save me. Have you ever needed to pray that prayer? Maybe you're here today and you need to call upon the Lord to save you. And let me tell you, when you do, when you call upon the Lord, he is faithful and true to give you the answer that you're asking for. <clears throat> Joel chapter 2 verse 32 says this, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
it's quoted a couple more times in the New Testament. But I want you to think about that. That is our faithful God. That is not a God who holds his people at arm's distance. That is not a God who says, you call upon me, but you're not good enough. Our God will never say that. You call upon him, and he is faithful to hear you and to answer you when you call. So I will praise his name. I will proclaim his name. I will call upon his name, and I will run to his name. I will run to his name. No matter what's happening in my life, no matter the storms and the challenges, the obstacles, the difficulties, the anxieties, the worries, all of that, no matter what is coming my way, I will run to his name. I have a made up mind that, and it's decided beforehand, whatever comes my way, I'm going to run to his name. Sometimes what you need to hear People cannot tell you. You got to hear a word from the Lord. And I just have a made up mind, and I believe that you do too, that when things come your way that maybe you did not anticipate, when hard times come your way, that you will run to his name and you will lean upon his name and you will worship him and that God is faithful to hear you and to respond to your prayers. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a what? A strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. I will run to the name of the Lord. Not only that, I'm going to trust his name. I'm going to trust. In my heart, I'm going to trust and I'm going to know that he is who he says he is and I am who he says that I am and I'm going to trust his character, not, not in the God that I think about, but in the God that is revealed in the scriptures. I'm going to trust Yahweh. I'm going to trust Jehovah. I'm going to trust Jesus, the name that is above every other name. I will trust his Name in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10, it says this Let him who walks in dark and who has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Let me ask you a question today. Do you feel like you're walking in darkness? Do you feel like you're just wandering around, not sure where to go or who to turn to? Let me tell you, you can trust the Lord. You can depend upon him. You can rely upon him. So as you praise him and as you worship him, as you call upon him, as you, as you run to his name and proclaim his name, let there be no mistake, you can trust God. <clears throat> Psalm 9 verse 10 says, those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. My friends, you can trust in the Lord. If you're here today and you've never called upon his name, if you've never put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you, today is a perfect day to do that. Because he loves you and he wants to save you and he has a wonderful plan for your life and he wants to set you free from from your sin, from the power of the evil one who may have captured your heart. Our God is a God who can set you free because the Bible says he who the son sets free is free indeed. Amen. So what can we expect? As we enter into this series together, and and I'm inviting you to be a part of this with me and to think about the names of God, what can we expect? And I'm just going to give you three things that, that is my prayer and that what you can expect in your relationship with God. Number one is this, as you know the names of God, it will deepen your worship. 
your, your expression of worship, maybe worship just feels like it's going through the motions right now. Maybe you just can't get into it. Maybe your heart is not engaged uh, in, in your praise and in your worship right now. But my friends, as you discover who God really is and His attributes and His character and His power and His grace in your life, then your expression of worship will become much more rich, much more engaged. Engaging in the fullness of, of, your, of your expression of worship will grow like never before as you learn about who God really is. <clears throat> Anybody want to go deeper in worship? Anybody want to go deeper in praise? Then let's get a revelation of the names of God and how he reveals himself in Scripture. Because, my friends, he's our creator. He's our, he's our strong Savior. He's our loving Father. He's our banner that represents us in battle. He is the Lord of hosts who sends His angel armies ahead to fight battles for us. He is Elohim. He is a God who exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And He is our God who sees us. He sees us in our pain. He knows what we need before we even need it. And He is faithful. He sees our problems and He is the Almighty God. And nothing is too difficult for Him. What else can we expect? Knowing the names of God will deepen our prayer lives. It'll take us deeper. How many of you are content with your current prayer life? How many of you are, have some room to grow in your prayer life? I've got my hand up as well. Knowing the names of God, knowing his characteristics will take us deeper in our prayer lives. Why? Because when we're going through things and when we're calling upon him, we can call upon the God that we know is revealed in the scriptures. For example, when we need provision, we can call upon Jehovah Jireh. When we need peace, we can call upon Jehovah Shalom. When we need healing, we can call upon and trust Jehovah Rapha. And so on and so forth. As we know and understand the names of God, it will deepen our prayer lives. And the Holy Spirit, my friends, is wooing his church, saying, come deeper in prayer. Spend more time in prayer. Get to, get to know me more in prayer. Commune with me more in prayer. Intercede for others more in prayer. And knowing the names of God will make us more secure and less shaken in the midst of trials. When we know his name, I may, I may be going through this, or I may be going through that, or I may be facing a difficulty that I never anticipated, but I know the God in whom I serve. I know his faithfulness. I know his power. I know his provision. I know what he can do. And my trust is in him. Through knowing his names, I know who he actually is and not necessarily who I want him to be. I know his character. I know his love. I know his heart. I know his power. And I can be secure. And I can be less shaken when difficult times Come my way. I want to invite the worship team up. We're going to end with a, with a time of praise. But I want us to read this uh, scripture again in Matthew chapter 6, commonly called the Lord's Prayer. I want us to go ahead and stand together, please. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. He said this. This is how you should pray. If you know it, would you say it with me? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.